So my presentation is on landslide occurrences in Southern Bay Philippines, contributing factors and implications to local governance. Now, why did I did this study on landslide occurrences in Southern Bay? Now, the, the reason, of course, is obvious. Uh, landslides has become a a worldwide phenomenon, a disaster, catastrophe, and Leyte is one of the islands of the Philippines that is frequently uh, uh, experiencing this natural phenomenon. Now, the common the common reason being put forward, particularly by local executives, is that it's because of illegal logging deforestation, removal of vegetation. Now, I really feel that there's a need to study what are the causes of this um, disaster. So the objectives of my dissertation research were to characterize and produce maps of the last state attributes of the last night areas in Southern Lake, St. Bernard, Southern Lake, Philippines. Now, St. Bernard is the municipality where the Southern is located. Now, uh, another objective is to assess the major factors influencing last life occurrences. And I also did a trial on last life projection using a, a widely known last life projection model, stability and its mapping or the same map model. Uh, what is last life? Of course, it's common, but it is defined as the downslope movement of rocks and soil materials. Now for occurrences, I do not have to mention occurrences of this natural phenomenon in other places because Lake experienced almost always this uh, natural phenomenon. In 1998, it was in Ormo and the life's cost was approximately 8,000. Now in 2003, that was the Panang Island, uh, we lost approximately 200 lives. Now in 2006, that was about 1,000. Recently, in January 2, uh, we were again visited by this catastrophic landslide. Now the impacts, of course we know already the impacts of this disaster to the community, economy, and the environment. Now, to the community, now, this is the new King Salgon village where the survivors of the 2006 landslides are being relocated. Now, the regrowth uh, houses are the giant, I mean, no, the uh, houses funded by Dawit Kalina. Uh, the mid green uh, painted houses are the houses uh, provided by Jaika and then the Red Cross houses. So, the survivors, actually they are, these are the, the people uh, who inhabited the Linsadun village but were spared by the disaster simply because they were out of their community. Now, this is the place where they commemorate the, the occurrence of the disaster. Now, Atabat is actually a river. And then across the river is a chapel where you can find the, the names of those who were buried alive during the, the last night of Lawrence. This is the, the mountain above where the last night occurred. It, so you will know later, I mean later I'm going to discuss the characteristics of the place. Now, so you will know that it's uh, very steep, elevation is high, and the vegetation generally is uh, a plantation crop like coconut. Now, so you can see the, the chains. You can see the chains of the landscape because of the occurrence of the last light. So it's difficult. You have rocks, so it's difficult. I walk the, the area for about two hours, it's more than, it's more than uh, four kilometers to the actual landslide area. Now, this is a portion of the hill of Mount Kanabag that has moved 
moved down during the last night, a portion of a hill. So you can just imagine. So if if the if the disaster is just due to the absence of vegetation, the absence the, the illegal logging, how come a portion of a hill this big, this is really big, uh, moved down about two kilometers down slope? This is the same portion of the hill that moved down two years after during my field survey. Now, as I have mentioned, uh, it was important to me to be able to determine what are really the causes. Because if you if you are going to listen to media reports, if you are going to listen to a pronouncement by local executives, they are going to tell you that it's because of illegal logging, removal of visitation. Of course, that's uh, that's correct. But it's not for for lady condition. It's not the sole reason. Now, there are actually based on literatures, there are factors that influence occurrence of landslides. Uh, these are put into causal factors and trigger factors. Now, causal factors are those factors that contribute to, in, to instability but may not initiate failure. So these are geologic formation, which I'm going to discuss later. And then the trigger factors are those factors that really cause the movement of the rock and soil materials. Rainfall, groundwater, hydrology, and deconsolidation. So for the methods of the study, Ah, I have two sets of data. I gathered two sets of data. The secondary data and the primary data. Now, this is a GIS aided uh, research. Now, from the, from the activity, uh, I'm going to discuss with you to show you what are these factors that make Lady Island particularly southern lady, very unstable and susceptible to last night occurrence. Now this is a map a showing the geographic location of southern lady and the research site. This is the southern lady portion. Now this pink uh, portion is set to be the King Southern last night area. My research site is this uh, green portion, which is actually a watershed because a watershed unit is a requirement for scene map modeling. Now, one, one of the causal factors for the occurrence of landslide is geology of the area. So this is a map showing the major rock formations of the study site. So you have this uh, yellow portion, yes, Miocene and the city, basaltic, uh, the city flows and Brescia. The, this is Pleiocene, Miocene, Intermediate Prokominates, and Pyroplastics. And this is Quartinary, Holocene, Alluvial Sediments. So you will note that the lower portion actually is Holocene, Alluvial Sediments. And then this uh, mountainous area is generally of volcanic rocks. Now this is a table showing the distribution. So you will note that higher for the watershed area, higher percentage is occupied by volcanic materials of Miocene uh, Miocene type. And then the landslide area, the King Salmon landslide area is the same, is dominated by volcanic materials. Now, another prominent uh, feature of the landscape is the presence of a springs. Now, if you will be in the place, if you can forget the risk being there, you will really feel that you will be amazed by the beauty of the place, and you can observe springs emanating at the sides of the landslide cuts. It's really beautiful. Now, this is in the Philippine map showing the plate tectonic setting of the Philippine fault line. This is from a barrier in 1991. So, one of another, I mean, another reason why lady is unstable is because of the presence of the fault line. A fault actually is a break in the continuity of the rock. And fortunately, the Philippines, which belongs to the Ring of Fire, is characterized by 
uh, the presence of this fault line in red, dark red color. So it runs from the north of the Philippines to the south and passing at the center of Leyte Island. Now it is also sandwiched in between the Philippine plate and the Eurasian plate, which are believed to be moving. Now this is an approximate length, uh, a table showing the approximate length of the Philippine uh, fault segments. This is Leyte Province. Leyte Province showing the distribution of the fault line. So you will know now the presence of the fault actually signifies as instability of the area. Now you will note that it runs also from the north of Leyte to the south and then it's forking, coalescing at the center and then forking again at the southern Leyte portion. Now this is seismicity map of southern Leyte. Now this is a table uh, showing the occurrences of seismicity in southern Leyte. Now I really have, uh, I have uh, stayed in the area while doing my field survey and I have experienced frequency of occurrence mga two to three times a week of uh, slight tremors of earthquake. Now when I have presented this uh, paper in Tacloba City and then there was a, one, one of the speakers was uh, a stack of e-books. Now we have discussed the occurrence of uh, the frequency of occurrence of earthquake simply because I have mentioned that when I check the re the, the record of e-books for occurrences of earthquake for south for Lady and Southern Lady, the slight tremors were not reflected. So it's still it's really possible that there are tremors that cannot be registered by the seismograph maintained by people. So you will know that from 2000 to 2010, there's a total of 128 earthquakes of magnitude ranging from 2.1, the highest is, there was in 1994, the occurrence of 6.4 magnitude earthquake in southern Lake. And then in 1998, a 5.9 magnitude earthquake. So that is how unstable the area is. Because according to Feeble's reading, the, the southern lady portion of the fault line is very active. Now, in fact, prior to the occurrence of the 2006 Ginsa Bunla slide, two moderate magnitude earthquake was his experience. Now, at 6.27 a.m., there was a 3.3 magnitude earthquake in St. Bernard, and then at 10.36 a.m., few minutes after its occurrence, the big southern landslide took place. Now, I have shown these slides earlier. I would just like to emphasize the characteristic as shown in this uh, image. So it's high, Elevation is high, the slope is steep, vegetation, you will know, is generally coconut. There are some trees, of course. Now, this is the digital elevation model of the research site. Highest point is actually about uh, 9,000 meters above sea level. Now, what, 960 approximately. For the landslide area, the highest point was actually about 700 meter above sea level. Now, for the slope, the slope really is steep. This portion here, the red one, is with a slope greater than 50 degrees. And this is at this point in the area where landslides emanates or originate. So you will know, for the watershed area, you have 50 and above, very steep. And then for the landslide, yeah, for the watershed, and then for the landslide area, you still have 50 and above. You also have 30 to 50 degrees with this distribution. Now, slope aspect 
But these are actually already the characteristics of the slope. Now, if based on literatures, landslides will generally take place uh, east to northeast facing slope, which is actually also consistent with the characteristic of the slope in uh, King Salvo area. Now, for the soil characteristics, now generally the watershed is described as rough mountainous land. That this is actually the the previous characterization. It's rough mountainous land because it's not being characterized in detail. Now the lower portion is San Manuel steel zone, which is actually characterized also as loose and friable soil materials. Now to illustrate how loose these are pictures taken at the last light area. So you will know really that it's loose, very loose, unstable. Every time I went to the place, I can really observe the widening of the last light area, indicating how unstable the area is. Now, this is a figure showing the visitation mark of the research site. Vegetation. Okay, in this table you have the distribution of the vegetation of the place. The vegetation is almost always being pointed at as the culprit for the occurrence of the last line. Now you will note that uh, in the watershed area you have we still have trees of course, but the percentage of occupancy is low. Now for the last night area, you have still a small portion with trees, that's about 0.19%. Cropland is cultivated. Cropland mixed with coconut plantation, which occupies 58%. When we did the survey, I really have confirmed this type of vegetation in the area. Cultivated area mixed with grasslands and grassland, you have 40%. So that is the land use and the, and the visitation of the landslide area and the watershed area. Now, another factor, this is not the trigger factor, another factor that contributes to the occurrence of landslide is rain, rainfall. Now, the 1990 landslide or Mock City was also associated with high amount of rain. The same with the 2003 in Panahon Island, and also the same with the King Salvador last line. This is a figure showing the daily and the cumulative rainfall for the month of February 2006 when the King Salvador last line took place. Now you will know that a week prior, this is uh, that happened in February 17, 2006. So the, before that, a week before February 17, please note the very high amount of rainfall, 157, 131, and 171. That's about, about approximately 500 mm of rain. Now total rainfall for the month, just for the month of February, is 979 mm very unusually high rainfall. Now, I have noted the unusually high amount of rainfall every time there is occurrence of last lights in Lady and Southern Lady. The same with the January 2 last night occurrence. Lady, January 2, 2011. Now, with this uh, information, in my research, I did, I tried, it's actually a trial. I did a last slide prediction activity using the widely known stability index map. This stability or seen map, there are a lot of uh, last slide models used by research scientists. Among all the last slide softwares that I tried to avail, this is the only one available free. The SIGMAP uh, model, as I have mentioned earlier, is widely used and this was developed by Pak et al. in the United States. 
Now, the segment model uh, requires geotechnical parameters. So during my survey, I collected samples for the analysis of these geotechnical parameters, like for example, particle size distribution where I compared the soil frictional angle of the soil materials in the area, and the total wet soil density, and other um, joint technical parameters. We also, I also did a landslide uh, inventory mapping. It's very important, in fact, this is the parameter that really took me time to establish simply because it's not existing prior to this research. And also, of course, the visitation of the area, the geology, and other input data. Now, this is the the spot and aster satellite images images showing the distribution of last light points in the research site. These red marks are actually the last actual last light points in the research site. Now, for the output, seed map is an is an extension in a GIS environment. It's actually a user friendly model. So anybody can use it for as long as you have the accurate uh, input data. It's a user-friendly model. Now for the output, this is one of the important output of the sigma model, the slope stability index map. Now this shows the stability index of the research site. Now the green color portion is the stable portion of the research site. The light blue, which is not very clear actually in the map, is moderately stable. Yellow is quasi-stable. Uh, pink is lower threshold. Red is upper threshold. Uh, this is light yellow, defended. Now, the stability and its values uh, indicates how stable or how unstable the area is. Now, if the stability, uh, this is the table showing stability and its classification of the same map model. Now, if you have a stability index value greater than 1.5, you have a very stable area. Moderately stable is 1.25 to 1.5. Quasi stable is 1 to 1.25. If you have a, an SI value less than one, you have an unstable area, so simply go to last slide. You know, among all these three, defended region is the most unstable because SI value is zero. This is based from the set map model. So from my input data, from my input data, the results show that the model really works well with the input data that I used in the model. So you will note that I inputted uh, seven actual, seven actual landslide points. Out of the seven, oh, four falls under the defended zone, which is the most unstable, one under the under th upper threshold, and two under lower threshold. You know, all of these zones are unstable. So the model shows that it works with the input data used and it can predict occurrence of landslides under likely condition. Of course, it's not all 7 out of 7 under the most unstable zone. And we try to rationalize this due to the presence of earthquake and fault line that are not considered in the model. Actually, that's one of the limitations. Now, when I did the, I did another survey that was in December uh, 18. I went back to the area and tried to visit. And I have noted that there are already visitation growing and Unfortunately and sadly, there are already households. In fact, there are 12 households that are established within the danger zone. Now, in my study, 
we tried to establish a four kilometer laser zone. What was our basis? It, is, it was actually based on the run out distance of the last light materials. Now, the materials move as far as more than four kilometers during this, the 2006 last lines. Now, instead of giving you, instead of giving you conclusions, I would like to put forward, and siguro there may be somebody who would like, would be interested to join me in my effort of trying to understand this natural phenomenon that frequently visits or that frequently occurs in our place. Now. More research on the hydrogeology characteristics of watershed areas to monitor changes in underground water level and movement. Why is this so? Because I really have observed in the area the presence of springs. There's a lot of springs and the presence of the springs are indicator actually that the area is unstable. So it's possible that whenever this, there is heavy rain, there is strong discharge of the groundwater level that will cause the, the area to be unstable and then later uh, rock and soil materials will move. Last night inventory mapping and continuous monitoring and assessment of last night indicators. Now during our survey, uh, you will really see, in fact, this, the, the profile that I tried to examine for, for the generation of the geotechnical parameters are not pits, but last like cuts due to cracks. So that is how, that is how obvious the presence of faults in southern lake provinces. The thorough characterization of areas along the lake segment of the Philippine fault to be able to establish danger zones. This is very important. Now I would like to I would like really to propose that food slows in Lady should not be used for residences. It's okay if last light will take place because it's a natural phenomenon and it cannot be prevented for as long as the factors conducive to its occurrence are there. It doesn't matter if it will occur for as long as there will be no lives that will be affected because it's a natural phenomenon. So it's important that there should be thorough characterization. I have done already for the whole of St. Bernard, and then I got a grant from Sharka to continue my dissertation activity, and then I was able to characterize a portion, still portion of Southern Lady Province, and then hopefully, if I will get a funding the whole of Lady Island. It's not easy, it's very risky, but I always find the sampling activity, the fieldwork of course, during summer months, and there is no more summer months in Lady. It's always wet and very wet. That's how difficult and that's how risky the activity is. An uh, intensified research effort on the modeling aspect of landslides. Now, based from my uh, output, SIGMAP model can predict occurrence of landslides. So if we can intensify, of course it needs to be uh, it, the, the input, the, it actually the model is good. But what is difficult is generating the input data because most of the input data are not yet ex existing. So you have to generate. Now, establishment of database on lately Philippine landslides, I have started with this also, for the Southern Lady. In fact, when I get back to our university, I have to do fieldwork again to locate the present uh, last slides that occurred last January. And then of course, ultimately, why, am I, why do we need to do this? Because hopefully, we should be able to establish early warning system. Because there are many people who are already residing in hazardous areas in Lady Island, particularly in Southern Lady. I have already told them they need to vacate, but they are not going to do it because they have already established their family in the area. So we need to have an early warning system, an early warning device to be able to give warning to the people. 
and hopefully avoid loss of lives. Mm. Recommendations. Uh, you have from the from the presentation earlier, you have noted that there is really low population of trees. It's very important that we need to plant more trees to improve stability of hills and mountains in the area. Human settlement is strongly discouraged in the stable zone and this immediate surrounding vicinity approximately greater than four kilometer run of distance. Now this is true for mountains or hills with a height approximately 700 meters. But we have mountains in Lake with approximately greater than 1,000 meters above sea level. So set up additional rain vision stations. I have told the Pagasa people already in southern Lake that they need to, some municipalities have already set up their own rain vision stations to be able to monitor a rainfall amount. Thank you. This is our university campus, Visaya State University, and this is Mount Pangasugan. At the foot of Mount Pangasugan is our university. And Mount Pangasugan is approximately 1,300 meters above sea level. So you can just imagine if it will come down, all of us will be buried alive. Fortunately, when I check the map showing the fault line, the fault is on the other side of the mountain. And this is the slope is facing west. Hopefully, we will not experience this very disastrous and catastrophic landslides. Thank you. Thank you.